Hi, sixth graders. Mrs. Hamill here. For today, Wednesday, May 20th, you will read Brown Girl Dreaming Part 2, Two Gods, Two Worlds, all the way through and including down the road. Step one is to open the Brown Girl Dreaming attachment below. Read pages 112 through 117, Two Gods, Two Worlds, all the way through down the road. Step three is to answer the survey. When you're done, make sure you click Mark is done. Let's open up the survey to get started. So I always like to preview the questions. So the first one's a journal prompt. Have you ever doubted yourself? Have you ever doubted your belief or religion? Why do you think that is? Number two, what doesn't Jacqueline's grandfather believe in? Number three, what does the boy with a hole in his heart tell Jacqueline and her sister? And number four, we will never leave you, we whisper. They stare back at us, blank-eyed and beautiful, silent and still. How does this text reveal the children's feelings towards their mother? Explain. So think about these questions as we do today's reading. So let's open up that PDF. Here we go. Two gods, two worlds. It's barely morning and we're already awake. My grandmother in the kitchen, ironing our Sunday clothes. I can hear daddy coughing in his bed. A cough like he'll never catch his breath. The sound catches in my chest as I'm pulling my dress over my head. Pull my own breath until the coughing stops. Still, I hear him pad through the living room, hear the squeak of the front screen door, and know he's made it to the porch swing to smoke a cigarette. My grandfather doesn't believe in a God that won't let him smoke or have a cold beer on a Friday night. A God that tells us all the world is ending so that y'all walk through this world afraid as cats. Your God is not my God, he says. His cough moves through the air, back into our room, where the light is almost blue, the white winter sun painting it. I wish the coughing would stop. I wish he would put on Sunday clothes, take my hand, walk with us down the road. Jehovah's Witnesses believe that everyone who doesn't follow God's word will be destroyed in a great battle called Armageddon. And when the battle is done, there will be a fresh new world, a nicer, more peaceful world. But I want the world where my daddy is and don't know why anybody's God would make me have to choose. What God knows. We pray for my grandfather, ask God to spare him even though he's a non-believer. We ask that Jehovah look into his heart, see the goodness there. But my grandfather says he doesn't need our prayers. I work hard, he says. I treat people like I want to be treated. God sees this. God knows. At the end of the day, he lights a cigarette, unlaces his dusty brogans, stretches his legs. God sees my good, he says. Do all the preaching and praying you want, but no need to do it for me. New Playmates Beautiful brown dolls come from New York City. Fancy stores my mother has walked into. She writes of elevators, train stations, buildings so high they hurt the neck to see it. She writes of places with beautiful names. Coney Island, Harlem, Brownsville, Bear Mountain. She tells us she's seen the ocean. How the water keeps going long after the eyes can't see it anymore. Promises a whole other country on the other side. She tells us the toy stores are filled with dolls of every size and color. There's a barber shop and a hair salon everywhere you look. And a friend of Aunt Kay's saw Lena Horn just walking down the street. But only the dolls are real to us. Their black hair and stiff curls down over their shoulders. Their pink dresses made of crinoline and satin. 
their dark arms unbending. Still, we hug their pla hard plastic close and imagine they're calling us mama. Imagine they need us near. Imagine the letters from your own from our own mother coming to get you soon. Our ones were writing to them. We will never leave you, we whisper. They stare back at us, blank-eyed and beautiful, silent and still. Down the room. Be careful when you play with him, my grandmother warns us about the boy with the hole in his heart. Don't make him run too fast or cry. When he taps on our back door, we come out, sit quietly with him on the back stairs. He doesn't talk much, this boy with a hole in his heart. But when he does, it's to ask us about our mother in New York City. Is she afraid there? Did she ever meet a movie star? Do the buildings really go on and on? One day, he says, so soft, my brother, sister, and I lean in to hear. I'm going to go to New York City. Then he looks off toward Cora's house down the road. That's south, my sister says. New York's the other way. Now that we're finished with the reading for today, return to those survey questions and answer them. The first one's a journal prompt. Have you ever doubted your belief or religion? Why do you think that is? Make sure you answer both questions here in complete sentences and check your answer for correct spelling, capitalization, and punctuation. Number two, what doesn't Jacqueline's grandmother believe in? Ghosts, God, excuse me, what doesn't Jacqueline's grandfather believe in? Ghosts, God, or hope? Number three, what does the boy with a hole in his heart tell Jacqueline and her sister? His condition was an accident. One day he will visit New York City, or he is going to die soon. So make sure you're checking your answers against the text. Lastly, number four. We will never leave you, we whisper. They stare back at us, blank-eyed and beautiful, silent and still. How does this text reveal the children's feelings toward their mother? Explain. So make sure you're answering that question here in complete sentences, and then double check your answer for correct capitalization, spelling, and punctuation. Then you may submit your answer, and don't forget to also mark it as done. Have a great day, sixth graders. See you next time.